Texas Tech men's basketball is officially back and in today's video we are going to preview the roster and the season for the Red Raiders but before we do be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball all year long we'll be looking at the schedule we'll be looking at who is standing out and we'll also be looking at the recruiting aspect of things as well so be sure to hit that red button to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball all year long, right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. All right, let's lay the scene a little bit for the Red Raiders as we know what happened last year, right? They went 27 and 10, 10 and 6, 12 and 6, excuse me, in conference play, finished third in the Big 12, unfortunately lost to Duke in the Sweet 16. But you look at kind of where they were ranked on Ken Palm, and we'll talk about their Ken Palm rating this year as well. But last year, they were ranked seventh overall in the country 42 on offense number one defense in the country go figure when you have mark adams as the head coach now going into 2022 there are technically only three players coming back that played minutes last year for the red raiders that's daniel bacho kevin o'banner and kj allen technically jalen tyson is a returnee as well but if you may know he transferred in mid-season from Texas last year, so took his red shirt, so technically didn't play for the Red Raiders last year. Who's coming in? Lots of guys. As I mentioned, only three returnees. You got Pop Pop Isaacs coming in. You've also got Lamar Washington, Elijah Fisher, the first five-star recruit in Texas Tech program history. You got Fardaz Amik, a transfer from Utah Valley, who is right now going through a little bit of an injury problem, but we'll, we'll figure it out, and I think he'll be fine, and so does Mark Adams. I'll read you a quote from him here in just a second. You got Robert Jennings coming in. You got C.J. Williams coming in, who is a walk-on and also the coach, well, Coach Williams' son. There you go. You got Devion Harmon coming from Oregon. You got Kerwin Walton, who was on that national championship runner-up team at North Carolina, and then you got Damari and Williams from Gardner Webb. When you look at those guys that came in, the big thing that should stand out to you is shooting. Texas Tech addressed that in a major, major way this offseason, whether that was in the portal or through, well, just high school recruiting. You think about it from the high school side of things, you got two guys that you like shooting the basketball, obviously, and Pop Pop, and then you got Lamar as well. People are going to be surprised by Lamar and how well and how far developed he is in terms of his game. When it comes down to shooting through the portal, you got a bunch of guys. Davion Harmon, a guy that I don't think people realize shot 37% from three last year at Oregon. That's a pretty great rate. Then you got Kerwin Walton, known as a shooter. And then you got Demarion Williams as well. And I didn't even mention Kevin O'Banner, obviously, coming back as well. For the guys that left, well, there's quite a few. The two names that you probably stand out the most to you are obviously Terrence Shannon Jr. and Kevin McCuller. Terrence Shannon Jr. left to go back home to Illinois. And, well, you know the story by now when it comes to Kevin McCuller. When it comes to the projected starting lineup as we get into the thick of things for this season... I think it'll be very interesting to see, and I think there may be a lot of combos early on throughout the season, especially with one position. I think when everybody is healthy, this is what the starting lineup will look like, all right? I'm going to go Devion Harmon at the one. I'm going to go Pop at the two. I really think that they do start alongside each other and play that combo guard position. I think it's kind of just a, hey, you be a primary ball handler of this possession, I'll be a primary ball handler of the next possession, right? Now, the three spot is interesting. I've seen some people project Elijah Fisher to start. I don't think personally that how that's going to go. I think it's going to be Jalen Tyson. Obviously, you're going to start Kevin O'Banner. And if everybody is healthy, Fardaz will start at the five. Now, since Fardaz is hurt coming off a foot injury, I mentioned we talk about that a little bit later. Why not talk about it now? Fardaz does have a, a foot injury. Mark Adams went on to uh, John Rothstein's podcast and said that he thinks that he will be back, talking about Fardaz, before Big 12 play, which would obviously be huge for the Red Raiders. Probably won't play in the Maui Invitational or anything like that, which is on the Thanksgiving weekend, or Thanksgiving week, I should say, of the Red Raiders schedule. But maybe he's back mid-December, gets a couple games under his belt before you throw, go through the gauntlet of the Big 12, which you start in Fort Worth on New Year's Eve, okay? Now, looking at the bench there, right, you're going to have Elijah Fisher coming off the bench. you got a five-star freshman coming off the bench, potentially, for the Red Raiders. Then you got Gerwin Walton. You've got Damarion Williams as well. Um, you know, I, I think you got Lamar Washington as well coming off the bench. I think Robert Jennings could have an impact this year. I do think that when you look at the grand scheme of things, 
The most interesting position, and I talked about it a little bit, will be that pop pop spot that I projected him as a starter for. Again, I have Harmon, pop pop, Jalen Tyson, then you got Kevin O'Banner and Daniel Bacho right now, but that would turn into Fardaz, and Daniel Bacho would go to the bench once Fardaz is healthy, right? But the most interesting spot in that starting lineup will come down to pop pop, right? Do you want to go really a multitude of ways there? You could go, do you want to get Kerwin Walton in there, get another shooter out there? Do you want to start Elijah Fisher alongside of maybe a Jalen Tyson, right? There's so many ways you can go, and I think that you're going to see a lot of lineup just variations that maybe you weren't expecting. I, I truly believe this. When everybody's healthy, you were going to see times where Kevin O'Banner's at the three because I think that you could see Texas Tech have you know a lineup where it's legitimately Devion Harmon, Let's just go with Jalen Tyson, Kevin O'Banner, Bacho, and Fardaz all on the court at one time. How often will that happen? I don't think it's going to be a lot, but don't be surprised if it does in certain situations, right? So when you look at what Texas Tech um, is trying to replace, obviously Bryson Williams is another big guy who I should have mentioned earlier, Donis Arms as well, but the two big names that I feel like everybody has talked about this offseason, mostly because they're still in college basketball, is Terrence Shannon Jr. and Kevin McCuller. But you look at what they have to really try and, I don't know, like not replicate, but do something similar to, because I think this is the pedigree for Texas Tech. This is the blueprint for them, right? Is to go out and, you no, know, you don't rebuild, you just reload. And Texas Tech has definitely done that. Texas Tech, if you didn't know, was picked to finish fifth in the Big 12 in the preseason, tied alongside the Cowboys, Oklahoma State. The four teams ahead of them, in order from four to one, were TCU, Texas, Kansas, and Baylor. For me, when I look at everything that's coming down to it this year, I think the overarching theme, and I mentioned it earlier in the video, there will be a different Texas Tech offense. You think about it, Barrett Peary has left. He's gone to UNLV. You bring in one of the smartest masterminds of offense at any, any level of basketball in Coach Green from South Plains. You also bring back Al Pitkins as well. He comes back from Florida after already being here on the staff. Um, I think the offense is going to be vastly improved in terms of spacing. And that's something that's really frustrated me watching Texas Tech basketball these past few years. It feels like it's really condensed and it feels like you're waiting till the last couple of seconds to take a bad shot on far too many possessions. I think that changes this year. You think about how many primary ball handlers you feel comfortable with on the roster right now for Texas Tech. And I would go as far as saying there's five, okay? Probably four if we're being realistic, but I could see five. And those four that are for certain that I feel good about, right, are Pop Pop, Davion Harmon, Lamar Washington, and then Jalen Tyson as well. Now, I don't want Jalen Tyson running it a lot, but I do feel comfortable if there's stretches needed, almost like Adonis Arms last year. That's the kind of role I think Jalen Tyson takes over this year for the Red Raiders. Now, why is it so important to have those primary ball handlers? Well, you can do a multitude of things with them, but primarily there's three reasons for me, okay? And I've listed this on my Twitter, and if you haven't followed me already, be sure to go follow me at RCMB323. And a reminder right here in the middle of the video, hit that subscribe button. We're giving you daily Texas Tech videos about men's basketball, football, whatever. We're updating you on the latest tech sports that no one else is talking about. No one else is giving you updates on Texas Tech volleyball. No one else is giving you updates on Texas Tech soccer. No one else is doing that. We're doing that here on the Back to 12 Podcast YouTube channel, okay? So let's get into those three things that the primary ball handlers allow your offense to do and why I think Texas Tech will be vastly improved on the offensive end. First and foremost, the pick and roll right? You've got guys at the big positions, whether that's Daniel Bacho, whether that's Fardaz, whether that's Kevin O'Banner, that you trust in that pick and roll type setting and defenses have to respect on the perimeter. Now, more so for Fardaz and Kevin O'Banner, but don't be surprised if Daniel Bacho shoots a three or two this year. His shot is vastly improved. And I'll tell you this right now, Daniel Bacho is by far the most improved player on this Texas Tech roster. I've seen a couple of practices. I've trusted people that I know within the program that have told me this. They think Daniel Bacho is here for a big time year for the Red Raiders. Um, and I believe it. Texas Tech has three really, really good bigs this year. And that's something that Texas Tech hasn't had in a very, very long time. Now, the pick and roll aspect of it allows you to do a lot of things. And it's kind of all boiling down to that pick and roll. But these two other things allow you to have this, okay, through the pick and roll. 
spacing, right? So now if you have a big coming up to the top, let's say it's just a one and a five. And what I mean is a point guard and a center coming up to the pick and roll. That allows you to have one side of the court with two other players, which is presumably a big and a wing. What you can do there is run a backdoor screen, which creates spacing and an easy pass for the one down to get a layup. It also allows you to run that big screen and back door for the big to get an easy layup. Now, it also allows you to come off that screen really hard if you're the one, a cross-court pass to the corner, which inevitably should be open because this guy is going to be leaking, the defender is, towards the basket to prevent an easier shot. Now, why is that big? You've got better shooters. You've got seven really good shooters on this team. I've already ran through some of them, but let me go through the names again who I think is actually really good at shooting the ball here for Texas Tech. Looking at it, Devion Harmon, Jalen Tyson, Kevin O'Banner, Walton, Williams, Isaac, and Lamar. You legitimately have seven above average or at least average shooters on this roster, and that's something Texas Tech hasn't had. Remember, Texas Tech has been struggling to shoot the ball from three for what seems like, except for one year uh, when they went to the Final Four for the past decade, right? So now you've got a lot more shooters, you've got a little bit less size, but you've got a lot more shooting, and that's something Texas Tech desperately needed, right? So those three things all kind of come together, and I'm not breaking down the defense because let's face it, everybody knows about the no middle defense at this point. It's the best defense in the country and you have the best defensive coach in the country in Mark Adams. So don't worry about the defense at all. It's what can the offense do? It Can it at least be average to slightly above average to let the defense have a little bit of a break and not have those games where it feels like it's the first one to 55 wins, okay? Texas Tech is going to be better at scoring the basketball, and I think the best part about this is the early schedule for the Red Raiders. And if you didn't know already, Texas Tech is 17th in Kimpom. I tweeted that out and also have the community tab here on YouTube. Go and check that out as well. But when you look at the schedule for Texas Tech, yes, you open with Northwestern State, Texas Southern, Louisiana Tech. But then you have the opportunity to go to Maui and you're going to at least face one top 10 team in Creighton, if not two in Arkansas, if you beat Creighton or they lose to Louisville. And then you got one more game after that as well. You could realistically face three top 25 teams out in Maui if you're the Red Raiders. Then you come home to face Georgetown, who is presumably better than they're showing last year where they didn't win a game in the Big East, right? And then you play Jackson State as well in the non-con, who's a solid team. And then you go right into it in terms of on New Year's Eve against TCU, and we know the gauntlet that is the Big 12. That is your Texas Tech men's basketball preview. If you are excited about Texas Tech men's basketball, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And let me know in the comments, how far does Texas Tech go in the NCAA tournament this year? Again, one more time, how far does Texas Tech go in the NCAA tournament this year? season. I am RC Maxfield giving you daily Texas Tech videos right here on YouTube for your one-stop shop for everything you need to know about Texas Tech athletics. You know where to go. Of course, I'm talking about the Back to 12 podcast channel.